the ultimate form of exercise for longevity, okay, as defined by living a long, healthy life, is strength training. Now, why is that? Strength training is the only form of exercise that is specifically pro-healthy tissue, okay? It's the only form of exercise that directly builds one of the healthiest tissues in your body, which is muscle. Muscle is hormone sensitive. It produces anti-inflammatory compounds. It boosts your metabolism. It's a storage vessel for carbohydrates. And the obvious, it makes you move. It gives you mobility. No other form of exercise directly does this. Other forms of exercise may indirectly do this, but strength training is pro-anabolic, pro-tissue. Train it for longevity. Is this... Uh in regards to the study that came out about uh, the muscle fibers yeah. kind of deforming and changing as we age? They that- just did a study, wild, right? Where they looked at That's mm-hmm. interesting. untrained uh, individuals versus trained individuals. And they looked at their muscle fibers. And the muscle fibers of those that were untrained were, as they defined it, irregular shaped. So deformed. Ah. Yeah, essentially, right? So here's what's wild about that. This really uh, backs up with Dr. Lyon has been saying, right? Five pounds of muscle is not five pounds of muscle. We, we used to think that, right? Now, one may be stronger than the other because we would say the central nervous system, you know, activates it better. Maybe it's got better use of energy, whatever. But the muscles themselves actually look different. Hmm. And they can see this now microscopically when they examine the muscles. So it's not that you're just building muscle. You also turn the muscle you have into a healthier version of itself. And what I said earlier about other forms of exercise, strength training directly, the direct effect of it is to build, is to build, is to build, is to build muscle. And muscle is this super healthy, essentially organ that you have on your body. And the healthier it is and the more of it that you have, of course, within the realm of, you know, natural and so forth, um, for the most part is better. When you have less of it and it's less healthy, you have terrible effects. The side effects of which are things like obesity, uh, insulin resistance, hormone imbalances, and loss of mobility. Um, so it's like, you know, for longevity purposes, just for living longer, um, all activity is good as long as it's appropriate. But strength training is like, it's so far head and shoulders above the others. It's in a completely different category. It's like strength training and then everything else down here. So these muscle fibers, like when you look at it, like is it, is it like what what kind of shapes are we looking at here in terms of like I, you know they're like, not uniform. I mean, I they're feel irregular, like irregular, yep. and like kind of curved or. You know, I feel I like know, we. I, well, I mean, I feel. Don't you feel like you can picture bit. this? I, <laughs> I, I, I feel like normal. I can picture this. There's a picture of it. Why? Well, oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Pull it up so yeah. maybe we could see it. But I mean, I'm 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 saying more so like the bodies, right? Like I've seen a. 60 year old body on somebody who's never lifted weights mm. and like their bicep doesn't even look right. You know what I'm saying? It looks, mm. it's all kind of like lumpy or shaped oh, okay. weird. Like, yeah, yeah. like envision a, a, an advanced age client who's never lifted weights before that you've had and just their, their the shape to their, even their muscle. Just little inconsistencies. Yeah, it looks weird. Well, so muscles. I don't, I don't know just, if that, how that applies to this. Yeah, I don't know if it is. But I'm just saying that like, I never thought of that yeah, until yeah. you just said oh, no, that. And like, I wonder if that's. I just a, sent the link to Doug. Yeah, I've never even thought about the quality of, you know, the mu- actual muscle tissue like over time. Well, so this, this backs up also the whole like, cause there's always, and I brought this up, there it is right there. So look at uh, young muscle, look at old muscle. Oh, that doesn't okay. help us. See the one on the bottom left, how yeah. it looks kind of like they're all uh, different shapes. It's not uniform. Yeah. On the right, on the bottom is the worst one. On the top is the healthy looking muscle. Okay. Your, by the way. So it's just a better uniform By the pattern. way, if you don't strength training, you don't, excuse me, if you don't strength train, even if you're young, your muscles under a microscope will look old. They'll start to look like they've aged. Hmm. It's totally reversible with heavy strength training though. Yeah. Remarkable, right? Yeah, it's so, interesting. So the, what's also cool, and I brought this up before, the whole argument, and there's people on 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 the social media, fitness, you know, people who will say things Who shared like, this of our friends? Is it- um, the study was not done by Dr. Andy Galpin, but he shared it, and I follow him. Mm-hmm. So I reposted it. Mm. So the argument of like the, oh, one pound of muscle only burns this many calories. You can only speed up your metabolism so much. Reverse dieting doesn't work, et cetera, et cetera. But we've all experienced this. Well, we'll have a client- and it's not like if you gain 20 pounds of muscle, you gain like four pounds of muscle. But with reverse diet them, they get stronger. 
They gain four pounds of muscle, which is not a ton. It's enough to where you could feel it, but it's not a ton. But then we'll see their metabolism boost by like 800 calories, right? A thousand calories. How is that possible? Hmm. Well, healthy muscle is far more metabolically active. So even though they don't haven't gained oh, pounds and pounds so of muscle. So your theory is that when what we've seen or what we've identified in yeah. is the you know, when we measure in these studies, and this is why this is such a, a frustrating argument for us, right? When you get these people that we just went through this back and forth with our, our buddy, James Smith, we were talking about the content that he put out there and we were just like, it's, it's not that simple of like what the, no. the studies show that, oh, this only burns this many, this yeah, many calories only burns this many. Right? And because in, in this, in this, in the research, we're, we are, we're isolating that, but right. we're not looking at what's happening metabolically to the entire body just by exercising again. So what you're saying is theoretically, not only did we potentially uh, add five pounds of muscle to this client where we saw this huge metabolic boost, but we also made all the other muscle in their body healthier yep. and, and better. Yep. Wow. Yep. Interesting. And now, I mean, let me ask you. I mean, you that makes sense. That makes that, that, How many that times seems you, to be, uh, it seems to help explain that phenomenon yeah. that we and know. And it's way more complex than just that. I'm, I don't even think I'm explaining, a, 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 you know, 10% of it. I think that's part of it because there's other metabolic functions in the body that we don't understand much of. Like you can become more and less efficient with your calories, even though your body looks the same just by changing the inputs, right? The signals that, and the stress and all that stuff. But look, how many times have you experienced this, Adam? Where you reverse diet a client, a female client, and she gains like five pounds of muscle. I don't know, like five pounds of muscle, but she's eating a thousand more calories a yeah, day and not yeah. gaining body fat. Yeah. What is that? You know, two hundred and fifty calories burned by each pound of muscle. I don't think it, I don't think that's necessarily what's no, happening. I think no. part of it is the extra muscle, but part mm -hmm. of it is the other muscle that she had is healthier. The other part of it is the body becomes less efficient with calories. It produces more energy, more heat. You know, so you get this thermogenic effect and there's a lot of other factors that are, that are at play, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It's like, you don't even have to build muscle. Mm -hmm. You just improve the health of the existing muscle that you have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Improve the, the actual function and health of it. It's interesting to think about that. It's crazy. Yeah. It's, you just, uh, you assume that you, you know, just visually or, or over the years you've built muscle that it's just going to kind of remain, uh, you know, in its intended sort of function yeah. everything's gonna work out who who shared that that conversation or that clip who was it that was was it peter atia or huberman who was sharing the that uh how how little of strength training you have to do dr to andy galpin was it oh was yeah. it galpin yeah oh it was galpin who's, yeah so the, now this is not for a trained individual but he's talking about the average person i'm, right. I'm pretty sure where <clears> the <throat> average person you lose a, a certain percentage of muscle every year as you get a certain as you reach a certain age and the question was how much strength training? How would little they need strength to do? training do I have to do in order to like? Just what's the minimum to prevent that? And he's like, right. he's like, like one every session two every two or three weeks. Yeah, would be enough to just not now because now because of that and like how how that's a big deal when you think about it. Yeah, and and also much easier to adhere to that than you know an hour of cardio every single day. So at what point do the doctors start shifting to that recommendation of hey, just strength train once a week? Once a week, I just need you to, and and maybe even simpler. You're gonna do these yeah. these three exercises, right? Like a, a squat, like a full body squat or an overhead press. Couple movements once a week uh, could have massive well, positive general implications. General practitioners, it's always that. You know, you have to go to that like minimal right. viable option for people, right? Because if and I, I maybe that is sort and of, that, the and that's what I mean by that, right? Yeah. I'm glad you pointed that out too. So I'm obviously I'm not advocating that for our listeners who are into health and fitness, like you know, oh hey, just work out once yeah. every two weeks, like no, that's the no, minimum but for general population. That would at least, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm thinking it. about the how much we're struggling with obesity uh, in this country, and if we were to just advise them to do that, you know, once a week, once every other week. Do you, do you know how many clients I had towards the end of my career that were in what would be considered advanced age, which I would classify as over 65. Okay. Do you know how many clients I had in that age group who I trained one day a week and that was it? Mm -hmm. That was it. They did nothing else on their own. I mean, to, to my best ability to try to get them to do exercise on their own, the vast majority of them did nothing else on their own. They had their regular life. They would come see me and I would train them one day a week. And it was not this intense, crazy workout. We're talking about 75 year olds, 80 year olds, where one of the exercises would be sit down and stand up seven times or try and reach this balloon that I'm Just throwing get the to muscles the to contract. Okay. And, and I saw, yeah. and I saw with every single one of them with once a week of strength training. Okay. At in a very appropriate level for them, 
I saw consistent strength gains in them. Yeah. And they saw consistent improvements in the quality of life to the point where I remember specifically one woman, Kim, who hired me, she was in this age group. And I remember her daughter questioning whether or not this was even valuable. She's like, is it, that's going to be a waste of time. She sees you once a week. She misses sessions sometimes because of her health. So like three workouts a month, four workouts a month, like, are we just wasting our time? And I said, no, we're going to see strength gains. She's, and within two months, she was like, sold. I can't, she, I remember her saying it to me, I can't believe the improvements I'm seeing with just once a week. Now, back then when they explained, the way I explained it was, I mean, it's way more than what she was doing. So it's yeah. going to get, it's going to produce something. Mm -hmm. But now when you look at all the data, it's very clear what was happening. It's like, that's enough. By the way, this doesn't mean, you know, uh, it's almost like, if you took a bunch of people who had scurvy, okay, scurvy from not having enough vitamin C to prevent d disease, and you gave them just a little vitamin C, like not, not what would be optimal, but just enough, you would see no scurvy. And people would be like, oh my God, this is insane. Yeah, I'm cured. What we're seeing, <laughs> pirates, yeah. what we're seeing is that this once every once in a while strength training is far from optimal. But I think what it more illustrates is just how de just how little people do, just how little of signal they tell their body that we need some muscle. Think about this. If your life consists of getting up, getting in your car, sitting down, getting in the office, sitting down, going home, sitting in your car, coming home, moving around a little bit, sitting down, your body has the signals that it receives are we need no strength, we need no muscle, we need very little function just operate at absolute minimum. And then slowly your body adapts downward. So, so this makes me wonder, because what we're talking about advanced age, we're talking about decondition, obese people, like how, how beneficial that this would be. I wonder uh, how beneficial this would be to somebody like ourselves who have put decades of consistent lifting and training. Yeah. Like, man, just if you just never fell off, like you just, hey, I'm going to make sure I never... Bro, I have to... I. I work the amount of working out I need to do now to maintain the the strength and physique that I have is so little in comparison to what I had to do in the past to get there. I know that's why I'm it's saying crazy. this. Like, so I like we've talked about like using the analogy of comparing it to like investing. I feel like we've done so much vesting, investing early in our life that we can get away with so much, uh, so much more spending, right? Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and 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 not reinvesting. Yeah, Just, true. You can get away and you could get away it's with compounding interest, isn't it? Yeah. And I really think that, uh, you know, people that are, would consider themselves ex athletes or at one time in their life, they were fitness fanatics. Like, man, you've built, you've invested for a long time. You've built a lot of muscle, but like, man, you just making sure you're hitting the weights once a week. It mm -hmm. seems like it, I wish we had some really good studies to show that. Right. Well, we do we with need trained individuals. It's like one, it ranges between one fifth to one ninth of the work that it took to build the muscles required to keep it. So let's go with the, the, the most, the smallest one, one fifth, right? You work out five days a week to build your muscle to keep it is like one day a week. That's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy with, you know, comparable intensity and all that other stuff. That is wild to me. But I mean, I experience it now. Like I said, in order to maintain, do you know what it would take in my 20s to keep the kind of physique? To have? But I, I wouldn't be able to keep it. I'd have to work so hard to build it. My mm -hmm. diet would have to be super dialed in and all this stuff would have to be perfect. Now it's like sleep is off. You know, I work out at 5.30 a.m. So my workouts aren't like super great, you know, most of the time. Uh, I'm not training with, you know, the, the same kind of intensity I can't. And it just stays. I mean, that's why I love using the comparison with like investing because it's like you make a lot of sacrifice and discipline early on, yeah. mm -hmm. but boy, does it really pay off in the long run. So yeah, maybe you're not going out and blowing all that money on those things in your early twenties, but Hey, stay the course. Cause if you keep reinvesting, keep reinvesting, sacrifice a little bit now while you're young and it's early, like, boy, you start getting 30, 40, 50, and you've put decade or decades behind you of being consistent and lifting weights and training hard and doing Your that. health retirement is much uh, brighter. Do you yes. know what I used to say? Yeah, I love that. You know what I used to say to people that was wrong? It was so wrong. You remember this, right? You're in the gym, average person comes in, and mm -hmm. you know this question would always come up. I always thought it was such a dumb question. They'd say, okay, well, once I build all this muscle, yeah. what happens when I stop, yeah. right? You know, and I'd be like, well, you lose it, right? And I used to say this. i say, whatever it took to build the body is what you're going to need to do to keep the body. I was wrong. Whatever you do to build the body, you do way less of it to keep the body. Yeah. Now, obviously, if you stop completely, it's going to go backwards. Right. 
But, oh my God, with strength training, it's almost like this panacea. It's like, hey, guys, work out. Be consistent. Build the muscle. Do a good job. Later on, you don't got to do nearly as much to keep it. That is crazy. I didn't understand. beautiful thing. I didn't know that before. I used yeah. to say the wrong thing. I know. And I feel like if we're, if we're communicating that better. That's a great selling message. Yeah. And that's why I think it aligns so well with the investing thing. It's like, I wish I understood investing like I do at this age back when I was in my yeah. 20s because yeah, right. I would have sacrificed a lot more from 20 to 25 mm -hmm. uh, and, and been smarter with my money because of where I just now, because before you know it, you are 40 and it's like, oh my God, if I would have just not bought that car or not did all those crazy trips or not gambled that money the way I did. Just, it's always coffee, by the way. Yeah. They're, they're, I'm, they're always like, if, if you just didn't buy one <laughs> Starbucks, yeah, yeah, Starbucks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be a millionaire by the time you were 45. Yeah. You have, to, have you ever seen those? Yeah, they're so of, annoying. Those are the coffee? most annoying. Yeah. They're so annoying. Coffee. Let's just say you go to the movies and you get popcorn. It's always some weird thing. Like, let's oh, say you didn't buy popcorn. I should have thought of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Oh, it's funny when you talk I to people. I should have bought a house when I was 16. Oh, no, dumb. <laughs> Stupid me. Today's giveaway is the super bundle of programs. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a huge sale right now, right? So it's January. Everybody's getting started. Here's what we did. We put together four bundles of workout programs. Each one of these bundles is between $300 to $350 discounted, okay? So $300 to $350 off each one of these bundles. Check them out. New to weightlifting bundle, body transformation bundle, new year extreme intensity bundle, and the body transformation bundle. If you're interested in any of them, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Bro, you want, I tell you what, I, had, I, I could have done so much because I was a kid I was 18 years old making six figures in 1997. I didn't move out of my parents' house until, let's see, 18, 19, 20, 20, until 2001, okay? So I worked, I made six figures, paid no rent. Yeah. I didn't have a car payment because yeah. I bought my car's oh, cash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had no bills. Yeah. I had no bills, okay? So I was just saving money. But all I learned from my parents, who you know, my, my parents are old school. They came from save, very- Save, yeah, save, save, save. They knew the, they knew the basics. I know, I had the same. It's yeah. just save your money. Yeah, they, yeah. they knew the basics because that's where they came from. So it was just don't spend a lot, save your money. Which, by the way, if you just know those two things, you're good, right? Yeah. So that's all I did. I just saved. And I'd have friends who'd be like, you know, you could buy a house and then you could take this and buy this thing over here. Yeah. They'd be like, no, I don't, I don't need a house. I'm, I think that's I'll, crazy. I'll just, yeah, I keep saving my. <laughs> damn, dude! I bet I'd have like 15 I properties know. or something I if know. I did all. That. I <laughs> Especially back then, because back then, my first house I bought in San Jose was in 2001. It was a three bedroom, whatever. It was 410 thousand dollars. Yeah, that same house now would be about a million. 1. It was 1. 01 when you did that. Yeah, we were right around the same time. Mm -hmm. It was 02, yeah. 02, 02. And it was three hundred and twenty thousand yeah. for my my condo. Yeah. And I and remember, I was making six figures. I could have bought two houses for that price, or I could have bought that one, paid it off, or, or rented it, bought another one. See, mine stretched me thin because uh, at that time I didn't have. I only had saved up fifty or sixty thousand dollars. You also had a bunch of car payments. No, I didn't that yet. Even back then? No, no, no. Oh, I didn't. Okay. I didn't move into. <laughs> I didn't well, I don't know. Me. I thought you did. No, no. I, I so it, it was after that. So that was actually, uh, and this was a, a mistake, right? Looking back, one of the lessons I learned. You know, there was a point when the the condo was worth a half a million dollars, right? So I had two, three hundred thousand dollars in equity, and I learned about uh, the. Obviously, you know the interest that you pay on your mortgage is tax tax deductible, yeah. and that's when I learned like. Why would you ever have a car payment if you have that much equity in a home? Oh, you roll it into the home, and then ATM'd now, it. now I did, <laughs> and and I, you know, that's when I bought my my first like you know eighty thousand dollar truck back then, and I and you know, and it, it's not that that's not a bad decision when you got that much equity in there. It's better than it shouldn't go take a loan out. You know, looking back now, I wish I would have had more of like the millionaire next door mentality, which is living significantly below yeah, my yeah, means, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I took I had I took that out, and then I also was that was in the era of like the loans were crazy. So I and I was young, so you I had good credit, but I, I had no, I didn't do a NAGAM or adjustable. But what I when you were that young, like even though I had like impeccable credit, never missed a payment on anything, I was so young in the bureau that you you don't that also has a lot of weight too. Oh so, yeah, so you could be perfect on your credit, but you only have one credit card and you've never mm -hmm. spent more than five yeah. grand. Mm -hmm. Like they're they they're you're still gonna have use a, a risk anyway. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, I had a a I had a, a, an eighty twenty loan, right? So one loan carried eighty percent of it, the other was a twenty percent of it, and it want the 
the fixed 30 on the 80% was 9%. And then the uh, 20% was a 12 or 13% loan. So mm -hmm. I had like a blended 11%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so even though $300,000, $320,000 is not a lot of money, um, it was uh, the in the interest that was- Do you know, do you know in order to me. buy my house, my first house, uh, when I first tried to go see what I qualified for, the guy tried to look up my credit and I had no credit. Yeah, so you like- I didn't the, have a credit card. Yeah. I'd never had a credit yeah, card. Yeah, so how did you get a good loan then if you- I had to go open a Macy's, I swear to God, this is a true story. I went and got a Macy's account. Right. And then I had I was able to get a credit card. And then any dollar I spent, I used my credit card and paid it off every month. Yeah, but even then that's still not enough. Okay, so- You must well, have had somebody write some crooked shit for you. No, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, I yeah. built that up and then over time, plus the amount of income that, ha that I had and the savings that I had. So I had over six figures saved yeah, up in the bank. I mean, you were the same boat. But as remember up. back then, they, they, they didn't have the same- Well, back, so that's what I'm saying. Whoever underwrote it for yeah. you did some kinky shit to make it look like you yeah. had like longer credit oh, or something bro. because- even even uh even if you did all that on your credit, unless you did that for five years, if you only did it for a year or two, I did it for a year. They want to see four credit lines yeah. for mm -hmm. more than four or more, or more years yeah. in the credit bureau. And at, when you're buying a home at 21 years old, you just don't have that. Yeah, like you know, most of us didn't get our credit cards till at earliest 18, 19 years mm -hmm. old. Yeah. And who but who goes and gets four credit cards? You know yeah. what I'm saying? So you, yeah, maybe you got a car crazy. loan, maybe you have one Macy's card. Mm -hmm. But normally then they, you still would be subprime, be like a subprime. Yeah, loan, but back but. then, you know how it was back then. This is what led to the 2008 crash, right? It's mm -hmm. like, it, it got crazy. People don't realize this, young people especially. You, you would go to the bank and they would ask you, how much money do you want? <laughs> okay. And then you would write down how much you made. Nobody checked anything. Yeah. I could literally be like, oh, yeah. I make $2 million a year. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. qualify for this. And they would just give it to you. Yeah, that's why. So I had friends, I had friends and family members who were making, you know, 70 grand a year, right? 80 grand a year. So not like tons of money, but okay, you know, okay money. But they owned five, six properties, like, because they kept doing that one after another. And they would do all these adjustable loans on all of them yeah. so they could afford the payments. Of course, when the loans adjusted to the new payment, everybody lost everything. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. I mean, what is, what is your family saying? And are you paying much attention to? Like, I don't know. Sometimes you're in and out, right? With like, are you really following the markets right now? Like, yeah. do you know what, what's your thought or what's your family's thought on on real estate this this coming year? Oh, I mean, they think it's good. If they drop the rates again, they think it's going to be another run. It's crazy. They're going to blow up. I know. You know what the incentive? And that's, because, and that's, that's just because supply is so low. Yeah, supply you know is so low. So yeah. there's st even though there's a significant. And you know who's going to buy up all when the rates investors. go down? Investors. Yeah, all investors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, not, you, not, not first time own, homeowners. I mean, that's that. So I got into it with some realtor online yesterday. Um, I shouldn't have let myself get sucked in, but I did. <laughs> Was it just comments somewhere? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I made like a sarcastic comment because he made this prediction of like, tell, basically, he was he's telling people like, now between now and February 28th is the time to did buy. Did you see? By the way, did you see that there was a meme with a real estate agent on it, and it's like <laughs> underneath it, it's like now is a good time to buy. <laughs> says guy time. who profits says from you buying. <laughs> okay, literally, that, 100 percent. Every yeah. time. Okay, so the, that was the. <laughs> I've never talked to an agent. Who's told me, listen, yeah. don't get anything. So, so that, I don't mess up what I said. Like literally it was, he, someone was pr promoting that. Now and the time. And, <laughs> and the comment I made was, uh, cause he was telling people to buy with that. I said, laugh out loud. I said, I have a better prediction. I said, more than 50% of realtors will need to pick up a second job by the end of 2024. Oh, well, so, I, gee, I wonder why he got mad. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he fires back at me. He says, Maybe uh, maybe it's a job with high turnover rate, right? but again, childish mudslinging at a prediction is wild. We don't even know why you're passionate about this, but would love to hear more from you if you could present yourself as more of an adult. Well, whatever. even though you're doing the funny voice, he actually said a really nice. I mean, he was pretty accurate and objective right there. No, 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 it's mudslinging. <laughs> I said mudslinging. I said it's just a better yeah. prediction than yours. I said just one week ago, Yahoo Finance posted 45 percent of realtors say they're struggling to pay yeah. their rent. You know that right now? Wow. 45, almost half of realtors right now are, are struggling to do that. But, it, and even in, so here's the thing that I don't like about <laughs> the people that are putting out stuff like this is like, and, and of course you're going to say that because you're, you're, you're dependent on people yeah. buying homes for you to make money, but you it's should like go buy a car. If you have, like, don't if buy you, car if you right unless, now. unless you're uber rich and all your family and friends are too, you shouldn't even want this. If you have anybody who's close to you that you love that are in the middle class or lower, you you should not want to see this because you're only going to fuck those people yeah. more. If if what you're predicting is true, if now is a great time to buy and you're going to get all this equity in the next year or two, meaning that means houses 
continue to go. Cause that was his, his comment is that you're going to get a ton of equity within a year, a year you'll have, uh, you'll have all this equity in this home if you buy between now and in the end of February. And it's like, I'm not saying necessarily that that isn't true because you're right. If we drop rates in this the, in yeah, we'll Q, Q1 in and we have this low of supply, then a bunch of people who do have the money will go in and buy up what's there just to take advantage of the lower rates. And all that will do is skyrocket the house. Yeah. But it's not going to be uh, middle class, uh, lower class people buying those homes. No. It's people with all the money. And so all you're doing is you're moving that out of range for your... And you know so the, if you yeah. have kids yeah. or you have family who are not rich... Like that's a terrible thing to want you know to see. What the problem is? They started regulating these investment. Um, no. Or, yeah. Cause well, I, they're they're they're. I heard whims of it though. Yeah, they're they're trying to put on a. Maybe Doug can look this up because I don't know where it's at. Like I brought a black this up. Blackrocks and, and they're trying to they're and, trying to limit um at big investment groups like Blackrock coming in and buying single family homes. Oh, yeah. That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what's so here's I, I don't know here's the big what, challenge what, that people need to understand. <laughs> so here's the big big challenge. If you okay, so here's what would have to happen at large scale to lower the price or to get real estate to become more affordable. One is a dramatic increase in supply. We need more homes. So in order to do that, we'd have to change regulations and make it easier to build a lot of houses. Okay. Here's the problem with that. People who currently own houses do not want that. Go to any neighborhood. Oh, I know. This happens all the time. I know. I know. This has happened all the time. Go to any neighborhood here in the Bay Area. Whenever they try to build They'll a lot new, against it. they fight yeah. against it because why it'll drop their property value. So oh, did, they, did they actually ban it? Yeah. I think it's a proposed. I know, uh, yeah, it's proposed when I brought it up. Yes. So it's called the End Hedge Fund Control of American Homes Act. Every time they name an <laughs> act something, so, though, I always like, I'm like, come on. Yeah, so the yeah, idea is like to a, stop yeah. institutional investors from buying single family properties. So, okay, where do you stand on this? I don't know where I'm at on this. What does that yeah, mean? Though? I know. What it is mean, that, so like, it means like BlackRock. Yeah. No, no, no. But what's an institute? What do they qualify? How do you become? Well, that's what they have to determine. Is it yeah. like people buying? Like investment properties, like no, you or I? like you wouldn't be limited to doing it. It's Why? it's massive funds. It's it hedge funds and institutional investors. So. What's an institutional investor? I want to know how they define. Oh that. well, I mean, well you could probably look it up. I'm sure it means that you you're taking on groups of ten or more people's money. Okay, that's what I was in say. order to 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 because that makes a big difference. Sure, absolutely. If I, it's like if anybody already owns two properties, they can't buy another. Okay, one. you're right. Yeah, I, I don't agree with that. No. But I mean, having somebody who has that much power and control. Because if you limit investment into the housing market, what you also uh, run the risk of is what happens in rent. Like for example, what happens in rent controlled cities, cities that try to control rent by, or try to make rent less expensive by putting a cap on rent. What ends up happening is the land, the, the property owners stop investing in their own properties. And so the properties become decrepit because they can't charge more. And you reduce the supply significantly because anybody coming in doesn't want to build new right. new properties because the, it doesn't make sense. So you end up with a lower supply. San Francisco, New York mm. City, and areas, that's what happens. It's like they, a, a property goes up for rent in a rent-controlled area. It gets There's like 100,000 applicants, and there's nobody right. can get it because- uh, Yeah, because the market reaction signals. is like, yeah, they got to regulate because, you know, it's uh, otherwise, like, who's going to be able to compete with, you know- All I mean, I mean the I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not against but it. The downstream I'm not against this. I'm not either. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's a very a, a very fair play uh, to limit them from doing that because that I mean single family homes. Is what, what do they them. need single family homes? Yeah, it, uh, honestly, like it. it yeah, I. Uh, Here's the thing. It's just, guys, it's just that they, they they can artificially in, a, in an environment like this they can artificially okay, control it. No, right? hold on. What I got an idea. About? You're right, but let me. I got an idea around or a thought around this. I just want to process this out loud. So, you've got these huge. Uh, investment companies going and buying single family homes. Okay. Yeah. That's a strong incentive for builders to build and provide more supply. When these people leave the market, we could potentially lose the incentive for builders to build more homes, thus mm. shrinking the supply more. No, we won't. Not as, so long as the supply is as low as it is and the demand is maintaining where it's at, even with these high interest rates, there's, the demand is still there for the builders. But that's my yeah. point. Is this demand, is this going to affect the demand to the point where the demand drops? 
And now we get less supply. No, because a lot of these these investing these big investment hedge funds have already slowed all that down. Anyways, they're okay. not investing right now. Okay. They're all halting all that anyways. So, but what it is is to prevent them from if we do do a rate drop right, right. now, going in when we have this right. low of supply, right. gobbling it all up, right. and then artificially when well, the offer is being so ridiculous, like you know your individuals coming in can't really like. Because you, you have to compete to, with that. This is what I try to do with stuff like this: is I try to really slow down and think about the, all the unintended consequences. I know. Because oftentimes we don't see them. For example, I'll give you this is not related, but we'll go in. We'll, we'll have politicians or whatever activists go into a third world country and lobby government with the funding of the U.S. government, or whatever, to prevent anybody under the age of twelve, let's say, working. Because so like child labor laws, we need to put these in this country. And then everybody celebrates. But what happens is all those children that were working, they were so poor they had to work. Now they're selling drugs, selling their bodies, or in such terrible poverty that they starve. So it's like you took one thing out that you thought was bad, but what happened was something worse. So I would be very, okay, so this bill denies taxpayers owning 50 or more single family properties. Okay. Any tax deduction or interest paid or accrued in connection with any single family resident, residential re rental property. I like that. Yeah. That's because you don't own 50 yet. <laughs> I mean, honestly, even if I, I mean, at that yeah, point, it's just green for me as an individual, yeah, right? Totally. If I got 50 properties already and they put a law like this, that I can't get any more tax benefit yeah. after 50, then, you know, then I guess I got to find other ways to make millions of yeah. dollars. That, I that is a pretty large bar. So, That's a huge bar. bar yeah. And you're not, and the people that you're, you're hitting on this are only the people that either want or yeah, these... controlling a fund or people that are uber rich that can afford 50 properties. I want to look at, I'm, I got to, I got to really think about this. I think there's a way around that though. You just open a new entity and buy under yeah, another that, entity. So uh, I, mean, I wonder how they have get a around. company own all those entities. Something like that. Yeah. They don't have to so, own that many. They just got to own enough that they can hold up to 50. You can have three that hold up 50. But you own all three entities? Sure. Does that mean that you own then 150? I don't know. Or, or could you do something like where I have Katrina owns one and then I yeah. own another entity? You know why I'm saying this, by each? the way? Because I'm just saying that you can get around it. You know why? I'm yeah. Sure. You know why I'm saying you always this? always can, right? Doug? Because how much influence do these big hedge fund ha hedge funds have over politicians? I know that to, to Doug's point, it would be interesting on how it's like, written to where exactly. they're all going to move around anyways. And it all yeah. ends up doing is yeah. making you feel better where, yeah. no, or fucks the guy like me who is trying to get that many. We're like, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that guy gets screwed because he doesn't have the, <laughs> the ability to, to yeah, navigate. Exactly. <laughs> So exactly, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, every time they do something well, like that, you have to nothing careful. and rent everything. So I'm, I'm just like, how I mean, that, to me that it, off? to me that has this never looked so believable until now. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I don't know if when, when they said that, like, what is that? Almost four. You know why? It was 2018 way. when he said that. I wasn't just, it? It'd yeah. be good to yeah, see the know, growth man. of that that company and what they've acquired in terms of BlackRock. Like, yeah, I would oh. like to see. Oh, that they're one of the. Oh, bro, I know, but like just visually, right? Like you see that Vanguard and what's the other one? Or like slow this down. Three of the most powerful companies in the world yeah yeah, yeah. No, i would I, internationally like, trillions properties. of dollars yeah you know and by the way the reason why this is happening is because it's politically expedient you have uh, an election coming up and to think that the politicians don't have influence over the fed is ridiculous so you don't want to be you're not trying to run for office while your economy is tanking so you're gonna try and flare it up with Pure a drop is, and is so mad you said that that's yeah. a fact I mean, it's whoever's in office. Listen, I don't I mean, care if the Republicans. Yeah, it's not a fact. It's a, it's something that we you strongly data. believe. No, and, I, and I wouldn't argue. No, Paul, it's on record where, where presidents will make statements, will push the Fed, will actually they'll sandbag. They're know, not so supposed to be able to right. let's put it that it's way. A, you're right. It's supposed to be, and and the the laws are in place to keep it separated that way. And so even if they are, there's there's no quote unquote proof. And so you're going to yeah. piss a bunch of people off by yeah, saying that. Well, you know the but Fed. I don't just. I mean. It will be really interesting if, you know, because everything sh says that we shouldn't lower rates, right? We we have not, we have not, um, we, we, before- That would rates, be terrible. It would be terrible. That's why I get mad. That's what the whole point is, the way this conversation started is, even if this realtor dork was right, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still- so childish. I'm still <laughs> mad that these so guys, these clean. guys and girls that are, are in this, are, are perpetuating that message because- yeah, in the short term, it benefits their pockets because you're going to have all these people buying homes. But how 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 small minded are you to not be able to understand? And I, you know, I saw Chris get on in there after I did and started jabbing at this person too. <laughs> and he's like, "This is why realtors should have to take courses in economics because you the things that you're pushing, the things that you're hoping for, the things that you're trying to do, like you should understand the ramifications of that yeah. long term. And if you if you get a bunch, if everybody does run in and buy again in 
December, January, and February. Do you guys really understand how how not good that is? Right. Like that's not even if the few people that bought they get equity in that year. You Listen, think that's a good I see like, it, short term gain? I yeah, see it. The long term problem. The incentives across the board are not there to allow prices to fall. Even with regular homeowners, I see this with my own parents. My parents, honest, hardworking people, not big investors. My dad had no education. My mom just went to high school. That's all she did. They worked hard. They saved their money. Okay, that's it. Even my dad, I'll come, he'll come over and he'll look at me and he'll be so excited. You know, a house across the street sold. Do you know how much it sold? Proud because he knows his home is it. going up in value yeah. because that is his retirement, essentially. Yeah. He yeah. has a pension, but other than that, his wealth is his home. I yeah. know a lot Do you of know boomers many are in that situation. Uh, most American, if you yeah. look at wealth and then you take out their homes, yeah. they most people have it. Even. Oh, yeah. that's The, the stats you see on millionaires, house. people don't understand that. Like I think 80% of that is in home. Actually. Technically, my parents are millionaires because right, the right. house that they own is that's worth right. so much. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because yeah. it's in San Jose. That's how most are. Like When you look at the stats on how many millionaires there are in the yeah. United States, I forget what I want to say. It's like 80%. Maybe Doug can fact check me. It's like 80% of that is within like, yep. yeah, home equity. Yep, yep. So it's like, yeah, look, you buy, up, look you buy a property 30, 40 years ago versus have $80 million in the property that they live in. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, totally. it's a crazy discrepancy. Yeah, no, it's, it's wild. Anyway, I saw something funny, uh, on X yesterday. It was, it was so, it wasn't the, the actual post itself wasn't funny, but there was comments underneath it that were killing me. Okay. And they were killing me. So there's this young lady, she's probably, so I don't remember who shared it. Um, I want to say, I don't remember. Someone shared it. I follow some like like pages that comment on social commentary and stuff like that. And it went viral. So there's this young lady. She looks like Gen Z. So she's probably early 20s. And she's talking to the camera. It's like a TikTok video. And she's like, you know, I live in East LA. And it's this kind of artsy, whatever she says in the video. And she's like, and I've been on dates, you know, with a lot of men and women. So apparently she dates everybody, whatever. And she's like, and you know, I always off, we always split the bill and we're always very equitable. And you know, I pay for the drinks, you pay for the food or whatever. She goes, well, I went on a date with like a bro, bro, like a man's man. He's from this part of LA. I guess she was talking about a part of LA where their dudes are more like kind of old school or whatever. <laughs> Is there a part of LA like I, that? I know. I'm like, really? I've never Orange been there. County or something. something. So yeah. she's like, and I went on, he's like a real bro, bro. That's what she kept referring to him as. She goes, and we go out to eat. And as soon as the bill arrives, he slaps his credit card down. Then we go get drinks. He's paying for everything. Finally, he's going to the bathroom and I'm ready to pay for the next round of drinks. He's already paid for everything. And he looks at me and he gives me his credit card. He goes, here, get us whatever you want. I'll be right back. And she starts giggling. And she's like, like, in other words, like she's falling for this guy. Like, oh my God, I loved it. It was so good. Right. <laughs> yeah. So the comments underneath are uh, so funny. Like okay. somebody said, somebody underneath said, wow, uh, he, he helped her reset the factory settings, you know, <laughs> <laughs> her modern way of thinking yeah. got knocked the fuck out as soon yeah. as like a guy was taking care of her. Well, oh my God. She's wow, like, nicer. I really like that. This yeah. is really nice. Yeah, you know, the comments really were, yeah. oh, they were killing yeah. me. They're like, oh, when, chivalry. when the, when yeah, the yeah, feminism the leaves this? the feminist, somebody wrote or whatever. And I was like, <laughs> God, dude. Uh, they were funny. brutal, bro. <laughs> it was so funny. Dude, it's funny things on uh, as far as on the internet, right? I saw the one that Jackie shared. I thought was hilarious, which has actually got a bunch of controversy and stuff around it too, which I think is really interesting. So, uh, a mother has a daughter who has got a school bully oh, who is this. stealing her lunch every day and taking it. And I guess the mom went to the school and complained this and that. And they didn't do anything. They didn't do anything. That's the story, right? Yeah, they didn't do anything. They couldn't prove that that was happening. And the school was like, oh, well, maybe she's losing it. And so, of course, it's like a frustrated mom. Like, no, my daughter's not lying to me. She's this bully is taking her lunch every day. So her mom's like, all right. So she she puts laxatives in the food <laughs> and then gives her kid like school, like lunch money to buy lunch after after the fact. And so- you know, sure as shit, like uh, keep an eye at the kid. It's like a Macaulay Culkin movie. Oh, so good. And so, of course, like, you know, (laughs) multiple days in a row, this kid's rushing to the bathroom after afterwards. Well, gets out, right? This story gets shared and everything like that. And now there's all this controversy that this this mother intentionally poisoned another kid. And I think it's such such bullshit. Bullshit, Kid stole the food. Well, you guys, she did poison the kid. Look, I, I see both sides of this. First of all, as a parent, Someone's bullying my kid. I know how I feel. Yeah. yeah. So I get it. Like, I'm not saying I would do the right thing. I wouldn't thing. do it, but let me tell you something. Time, if, I, I can if, argue my the son, if my son is bullying a little girl and stealing her lunch and the mom poisons my son with laxatives, 
fucking, I'm looking at my kids. See, that's how why you learn did, your, Why did he take the lunch? Learn your lesson, shithead. Like, yeah. you shouldn't be taking a little why, girl's why lunch. Why did he take the lunch? And you're lucky it was just a diarrhea pill and it wasn't something else. Well, laxatives can be dangerous, bro, for kids. It can cause a lot of issues. Were you just going to eat some random food? Like, you don't know what's in there. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm just well, saying. Well, did you hear like, that? that did you hear dangerous. the difference? So, this all went viral. There's people on both sides, just like yeah. you're saying right now. And did you hear the way they, they said to defend it? They said that she should, all she has to say is that my daughter needs a laxative. My daughter has been complaining of, you know, digestion and stomach issues. So I've been giving her laxatives to yeah. help her out. Yeah. And so yeah. shame on him for. <laughs> she doesn't even admit that. Like, it, honestly, it's like, it, it's not his property. He he decided to consume something that he knows nothing about. Yeah. I don't, I don't know, Sal, you know, what you're smoking if you're defending that side at listen, all. Listen, listen. Okay. I don't know how old, how old is the kid? Six years old? Six-year-olds can act shitty, okay? Now, I is get it. Six-year-old? Is it? Was it that not, young? Not, I thought no. it was older. It's older than that. That does kind of change it's the not, perspective Bro, six-year-old. Even 12-year-olds, like, 13-year-olds can act really shitty. Okay, let's well, find yeah, out what yeah. the age is. Well, that makes a big difference. Yeah, but imagine, big listen, difference. listen, you guys. Imagine, we have a good friend. I'm not going to say his name. We have a good friend say who's an name. honest, hardworking, does it say how old the kid was? Looking for it right now. Okay. We have a friend of ours. I'm not going to say his name on air because I don't want to air anything out, but we all know him very well. He's a good guy he's yeah. a good honest man he has kids he tries to raise them right he recently took his kids all their electronics away for i think it was three months do you know why he found out his 13 year old daughter was on this thread with a bunch of other girls and they were bullying this other girl relentlessly okay mm. that's his daughter okay. so you could be a great dad your kid makes some shitty ass decisions some other parent puts fucking Potentially dangerous. Bro, I, I, I doesn't change. My, I'm a great dad. My son, I think, is a great kid. Yeah. My son, bullying a little girl, taking her lunch, a lesson. gets laxatives. Yeah. And I, you know what I say to him? You're lucky it wasn't something that could have killed you. Yeah. Yep. You're lucky you just got some diarrhea, son. Yeah, Because yeah, exactly. you're eating it was six somebody else. Six years old, guys. Does it say okay. six? Six year old. Yeah, they don't oh, really yeah, know. Yeah, it say six, yeah. You guys, that's fucking, that's, that that's is not different. good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay so different. is it really six years old? That's what yeah. it says. Yeah. Okay, so my, that's a different my story. Opinion that is a different story. <laughs> yeah. No, six years old. I thought old. it was like 12 or 13 or, you know, and that range is, to me, that's, you're formed you, into You know who's, by the way, you know who habits. got, who's out, who like has less the conversation we're not even talking about? The fucking school. Oh, the yeah. real issue is why, if the mom told the school, no intervention, nothing happened. Yeah, this yeah. poor kid was being, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, I do want to. I do want to admit though, six years old makes a big difference. Yeah, because it's, you're talking about such an early age. Yeah, what if your six year old kids like they, taking they some of the kids' toys? Things. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you're, and then you're, yeah. you know, no, no, no. I think the cutoff is about ten or twelve. You're doing that around ten or twelve. <laughs> you should know better. I'm serious. Yeah. I don't disagree with that. Yeah. Actually, look, look, six years old is really young. It's yeah. getting, I mean, you should still know better and you should be better parenting than not let your kid do yeah. shit like that. But that, yeah. at that age, like, I mean, at that, okay, if that, if that's I'm, happening I'm more interested to, in confronting, you know, yes. not doing this like sneaky, yes. right. Thank that's you. what I'm saying. Bullshit. Okay. At, you're right. At that 100%. age, at that age, I'm coming down to yeah. the school and I'm going to, and I'm going to confront the parents of the kid, yes. Yes. the six year old, yes. because at that, and, and, and I would want that as a, like, cause you're right. You're not going to take it out on a kid. Yeah. Right? Cause maybe my, like, imagine my son could do something like that. Just not knowing better, right. Right? not knowing better, doing, thinking that he just can, right. Who knows? She could have and, like I wanna, and I would want to, and I would want a parent, a parent to come to me at that young yeah, of an age, yeah. but he's, he's 10. You know what I would 12. be, you know what I would be more happy right. with? You know I would saying? be more happy with the mom putting laxatives in the school administrator's food. That's where I would be a little <laughs> bit more like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, damn, six, cool. hey, six is early, bro. Six is early. That's yeah. fucked up. And I'm yeah, telling you, it's dangerous. Right, laxatives early. can be dangerous, uh, that, to, especially to children. That's early. Like, sure, if you get, even, yeah. if, even if it's not that, that's still a little early because it's like, Man, at six years old, kids, kids are, kids are, fucked kids up. are still figuring things yeah. out at that age. I mean, that's like a, it could be totally. But look, I'm going to tell you something yeah. right now. He could, <laughs> a little kid could be flirting with her, you know, at that Listen, age. Listen, you, you're right. Listen, and but I understand as if like, again, as a father, sure. I've had situations where my kids had another kid bully them. And my instinct that comes out is sure. if I were to act on my instinct, I would smack the other kid. Like how terrible would that be? I show yeah. up and hit and smack a 10 year old across the face, right? I wouldn't do it. But the instinct I feel inside is like, you made my kid cry. Like you threw something at them or you, you know, cut their hair or whatever, you know, bullies do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get it, but you can't do that. No, nah, six years no. old too young, bro. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. That's a, that's way. I too told you guys about the time my sister got bullied when I, I was in high school, I was a junior or a senior and she was in eighth grade and she got jumped by like three girls and then they terrorized her and my, she wouldn't tell me about it. Neither would my mom because I knew I'd overreact. Sure enough, I find out. And I told my sister to call the girl out after school and then to page me. Back then we had pagers. And I rolled <laughs> up. One. I rolled up to the junior high. You I remember rolled, I'm in, rolled up with what, a bike? No, my car. 
Huh? I was. I'm in. I'm in. Oh, I must have been a senior. In, okay. Oh, you're in high school. High school. Oh, oh, oh. So these are these are. How old <laughs> are you? Eighth grade. Thirteen. You're like Something thirteen. Like you're, you're red flag. So these are thirteen year old flyer. kids. I'm like seventeen or eighteen. Okay. And I roll up with all my cousins, all my buddies. We drive up, and there's this group of girls waiting for my sister to come out. I wave, so my sister sees me. She comes out. I tell her to point out the girl. The girl comes is like scared because she sees all these big men. You know, I'm a man at this point scared and i told the girl to point out her boyfriend because i felt like this would be a little bit better she pointed her boyfriend i smacked her boyfriend in front of the whole school and i said if you mess with my sister again i'm gonna beat the shit out of your boyfriend yeah. and we left and i never nothing ever happened to me but that was my so i understand this mom is all i'm trying to say <laughs> i get it bro. I, I feel like there's a lot of bad ideas coming out today yeah. you know what I mean? it's like it's just people who are listening yeah. don't do any hey, of this yeah. stuff okay hey let's talk, zen you guys yeah. hey let's talk about a good idea you know what i just read <laughs> it's your good idea you know what i just read about red light therapy well, yeah, okay good. so i was doing the red light earlier okay, good, okay good. i haven't done it for a while went in there did some red light yeah, and yeah. every time i stand in front of it like part of me is like is this like if, if i look into it or whatever it's healthy for the eyes, eyes. So I asked. they actually did studies on. Yes, it's now, good for the now eyes. Now they did studies where the eyes were closed. So the red light does penetrate to a point past the eyelids, mm -hmm. but they improve the health of the eyes and they improved vision. So this is why I thought it was interesting why they some of them include some the goggles. Goggles are like yeah, because I remember when it first when it first came out. I remember asking that. Because you're supposed to do that when you go to like a tanning bed, right? Because right, yeah. th that isn't good yeah. for you. Maybe they initially thought there was some kind of damage or something. Well, you know, long term, I think it's so bright. You're probably better off not looking directly into it because the brightness. It itself doesn't bother my eyes at all. It yeah. doesn't. No, no, it doesn't bother my eyes at all to look at. It doesn't. See, it's not the same kind of bright. It's like well, any, well, the point is the studies I read were not eyes open looking at it. They were eyes closed, but uh, then the red light is it, it does penetrate past the skin of the eyelid, yeah. and it improved. People's eye health and vision, crazy. Well, yeah. I mean, it makes sense, all right? All cells it can affect. That's right. Yeah. Any 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 cell that has mitochondria, which is all of them, yeah. it's going to improve the health of mitochondria. It's going to improve the health. Do you of believe? Cell. Okay, so you, we're obviously we're we're fans of of the red light. Like we would obviously would have partnered with yeah. you if we didn't. We were blown. We talked about how blown away we were back then. Like we didn't believe it. We thought it was some bullshit. Do you think that because it seems like they continue to have more and more studies to support all these, I mean, everything from skin to metabolically to eye health to hair to insulin to, sensitivity. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, dude, does it get to a point where we start to install these into homes yeah. and you have like rooms yeah. that you just, you get, I mean, cause you could work and do stuff in it. It just, I mean, obviously it makes like kind of a red hue, but it doesn't mean you can't do stuff around right? like why would you not start? In the market for red light therapy yeah. has already exploded because the cost of good red light therapy has come down. It used to be not that long ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. The only people that could afford to buy the kind of red light that was in the studies were people who had, you know, $50,000, $100,000 to invest. So you would go to a, a, a salon and they would have them and you'd see these at salons. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then companies like Juve came out and you're not paying 50 grand for a panel. You, it's affordable. Most people could afford one. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, it's exploding. In fact, if you, I don't know if you could find the data on red light therapy, um, you know, home, like the market for it and how much it's exploded. But I think it's, I think it's, uh, it's exploding. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to think because like if you look at the workplace and you look at where, um, you know how it's all been formed into like us staring at a, a computer screen and sitting down and you know i think they got rid of most like cubicle setups and they've tried to make it more yeah. kind of open space and they've learned a little bit from that uh, in terms of like having more community not being isolated and like in this tight conform but like the next level to that would be to have like a room like that mm -hmm. i would think yeah maybe you work in there for like 10 minutes or something and then the next shift kind of comes in mm -hmm. and at least you get some benefits while you're forced to be like sort of in this I mean space. I would love the my shower area there you go. that way because I already, I'm in there what does that say Doug wow it looks like a 4.1 percent growth year over year what, now what year does that start uh 2020 what was the sales per year there 288 uh, million in 2021 313 million wow it's exploding four percent growth year over year is massive yeah I, I would convert my bathroom. That's what I would do. Just yeah. have an actual. 
yeah, like the whole bathroom would glow as it. The amount of times that I'm in, I'm in there for a shower or restroom, it just, that would be the light. And it doesn't, like, you don't need, like, you're never doing, like, work or watching TV or doing something like that in the bathroom. So I feel like the, you like the having that I mean, color. You do work, but, you know. Yeah, different kind of work. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, the, think about the amount of time that you're in there. I, I shower every day, at least twice a day. So there's, you know, 15 minutes each time. So it's th you. 30 minutes. Jesus. You go to the bathroom. Shower guy. You know, at yeah. least a, 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 every, every guy, every dad. Escapes to the bathroom yeah. for at least twenty three. Yesterday, my, my son. <laughs> that is Look, such the move, bro. That's dude. such a sore spot. Can you not talk about, bro? This? I'm gonna, dude. Women are. Catching why did you get in trouble for this recently? Oh, I, this uh, is what do you mean hey, recently? Hey, always. I know Katrina. Like, yeah, we, I got mad at her the other day because it's like a lot of times when I first get home, especially if I come home from traffic or is that like that's the, I, I get home from work. It's like, and that's the first thing I, I want to go do. I go upstairs to our bathroom, yeah, yeah. away from everybody else, and close the door. And it's like it never Peace fails. I come in, you know, kiss her higher with that, and then that's the first, I go straight up, go straight upstairs, and then like I can as soon as I shut, sit down, I hear, "Honey, yeah. honey, yeah. honey!" And I'm like, "Ah, yeah. <laughs> just leave me alone for 15 minutes." <laughs> you know what? You know what's funny though. Yeah. Let me ask you guys this: I didn't realize uh, as much like I was that part of it was that like a break. I just did that. It never was yeah. until I became it a dad. Pointed out, it wasn't until I became a dad. Yeah, yeah. It, it became that as a dad. Once I became a dad, it became like a, a, a safe space. Well, you just yeah. can't like escape anywhere, you know. Like it used to be like yard work or something. Like I'll do that sometimes, but I'm like, you know, like it. It's the weather's not great or whatever. Like the the safe place is always the bathroom. You, know? <laughs> you just know, like, it, oh, gross. I'm not gonna go bother you. I'm like, yeah, it's gross, it's terrible. You know. I'm just like, <laughs> 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 Got my own like you know sanctuary. Oh, that's there. terrible. <laughs> anyway, so um, was in conversation with the guys at Ned uh, because uh, just spoiler alert, we're working on something that might drop in. Yeah, the when, when is that coming out? Um, By the way, where is it? I'm not gonna. Uh, is it in here? Is it yeah, in I'm here? Hoping, I'm hoping. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, we got it. Yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, within the next few months. I've actually really enjoyed it. So yeah. you know what I like about them? They're they are. They're so far above and beyond uh, with, other, with other companies and products because they understand not just cannabinoids. First off, most companies understand CBD. They don't understand CBC, CBG, yeah, all the and all the other cannabinoids. But they understand all the cannabinoids, plus they understand how they all work together, plus they understand the involvement of terpenes. Terpenes are what give hemp and uh, cannabis its smell. And I've talked about this before on the show that it's probably the terpenes for people who smoke weed or have cannabis. It's probably not the sativa or indica that's making one make you feel like your couch locked, the other one give you energy or whatever. It's probably the terpenes and how they interact with the cannabinoids. Wow. So when you smell something and it's got a familiar smell like pine or skunk or it's got a lemony smell or whatever, these are all based off the terpenes. When you ingest or burn terpenes or whatever, in combination with cannabinoids, they produce different effects. And I know that now what's cool about these guys is we're talking about a certain product with a specific goal, and they're talking about the terpenes that they want in there because that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And so they just so they I kill it, man. I had I had the opportunity, obviously, being in the space as early as I was to uh, to see a lot of companies up and coming. And there's only two companies that that have impressed me like to this level, and it. One was Dosist and the other one is Ned. Mm -hmm. That they were they were this far ahead of everybody yep. else of actually paying attention to this this research as it was coming out, um, and and actually starting to create products and and see the difference like with the terpenes that you're talking about. Like that was something nobody talked about. Nobody. Like, no, no one talked about that in the space until Dosis and Ned. Those are the only two that I had ever seen that actually were evaluating that in the decision of like, oh, what's, what yeah. strain should we put yeah, in this? this is one. Replicate it and formulate it. So yes. it was like scientific. It wasn't yes. just like, oh, this is, uh, uh, I don't know, Captain Crunch, uh, whatever, like name <laughs> strain that yeah. they came up with. You know? by, by the way, I noticed that about myself a long time ago, just with cannabis, that there's a certain strain type and it has a specific smell that would produce anxiety with me no matter what. And then I, I thought it was the strain, but now I know it's the smell. So if I smell something and I smell it and I know this is going to make me anxious, I'm not going to Well, have yeah, it. anecdotally, I think weed smokers have known this for a long time. Yes. Everybody has their favorite strain, yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and they, you know, some might attribute, oh, the smell or the taste of it yeah. or whatever. But, but the but terpenes are what give the smell. Yeah. That's the smell. By the way, the terpenes are found in lots of uh, other plants too. For example, lim limonene, I think is the name of it. It's a terpene that is uplifting. It's found in lemon. Sour D. And lemon. Sour D, I think, has... Yeah, it has that. Limonene, and there was something else. Pinol? 
Yeah. I think it might be yeah, the other one yeah, that's yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm not sure. That was a, a interesting. That's a popular one. It was huge. It's always been. And so, I mean, I think that 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 so that was like the kind of like uplifting and and you know you get the the laughing and energy yeah. type of feel from it. And then the other end of the spectrum would be something like uh, GDP, right? Would be the opposite, which would have the kind of heavy sedative type of feeling that's more recovery, relax, all right. that. Which right. is you know, Granddaddy Purple. Those two, I felt like were the two wow. polar opposite ones. All right, like. so uh, we're going to do a shout out to somebody that we've talked about before, but the reason why, well, he's got a new book. So let's talk about that first. It's, so it's Ben Greenfield. His mm. book is Boundless Kitchen. Love the guy. Great guy. Super smart. Uh, Doug, that book you said, now what, it's bound, I'm, so I'm assuming Ben Greenfield, he's going to write about foods, first off, that taste good because he's a really yeah. good cook. Yeah. But also- uh, in terms of their value, Some kind of, of bio optimized. Yeah, yeah, so I think all the recipes Benefits. are designed to be healthy. Yeah, uh, but he has a lot of recipes that kind of satisfy that you know desire you have for say fried food or desserts and yeah. things like that. Oh, uh, interesting. For example, I'm just looking through his book right now. I haven't actually done any of these yet, but they look ex very very good. Crunchy chicken cracklins. That sounds interesting. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. He has a reverse sear ribeye, southern buttermilk, mostly guilt-free fried chicken. Wow, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> and then he has a bunch of desserts. He has amino jelly, or oh, jello, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, deep sleep gummies, homemade. Oh, wow. He got a recipe what for What are those. the ingredients for that? That's cool. What do the deep sleep <clears throat> gummies have? Let's see here. Um, so Lavender. One cup. Uh, I'll just give you the, the yeah. ingredients. Uh, tart cherry juice. They're anti-inflammatory. Lecithin. Uh, honey, gelatin powder, uh, adaptogen of choice, which I probably I don't ashwagandha. Know, ashwagandha or something like that. Uh, CBD, okay, and uh, and powdered glycine, which is optional. Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, glycine helps with sleep too. Yeah, so I think it's a very cool. interesting little book. I think I'm going to try some of these actually. Interesting. Um, Looks anyway. really well done too, huh? Yeah, it's, he, it's fantastic. Anyway, did you guys see the video of him on social media? He always does a weird <laughs> yeah. shit, dude. injecting his balls. Oh, was I don't his know. His balls or his pee? Yeah, I think he's injecting. He's getting the pee shot. No, it's his balls. No, yeah, did you not prostate. read it? Look, what did it say? Oh, I thought yeah, it was a prostate. His balls? I thought maybe not. Maybe you're right. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we went from uh, coffee enemas you, to so the it's, pee shot. Well, I mean, is that worse or better than his pee pee? What would like you rather get a needle in your in your in your in your wing or the <laughs> in, in the frank or, or the beans? Ball. If I had frank to choose, come on, dude. You want the definitely the beans, not the frank. What? Bro, if I if I flick That's, you like this, I feel like I'm with you. I don't want to mess with my yeah, main my, performance. Yeah, but yeah. which one's gonna hurt more? I, I, one of them I can live without. The other one I can't. I'm like I'm the can't yeah, live without. Okay, yeah, okay. That's what I'm so then I'm, I'm more I'm, I'm more pain. protective of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm talking about a painful. I got pain two balls. If one of them doesn't work after that, we can, we're okay. Yeah, you're like, what's his name? Yeah. 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 Lance Armstrong. Yeah. No, 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 I'm talking about from a pain perspective. Yeah. Come on, well, they probably numb you up somehow. I'm sure. Yeah. Either way, I'm, great, you're kind I'm of glad screwed. we're having this conversation. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome, Doug. Mm -hmm. You got it. By the way, by the way, the way they numb you up when you go in for these procedures is they they massage uh, Novocaine gel on you. You imagine that you're sitting there, yeah. <laughs> your doctor comes it's not, in, it's not working, gotta numb you up. Yeah. <laughs> it's never anybody you're excited about. That's what I'm saying. It's, 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 it's never that. No, it's, no it's, bro. I told you about the Turkish guy. With the yeah, yeah, it's always that prostate. guy. Yeah, it's always that guy with big fat fingers big and a hairy mustache. Yeah, hey, look, guy. it's not some Swedish model. Hey, comes ran, out. Ran, <laughs> I'm here to rub your Novocaine yeah, on your nuts. We, we, we ran out of no. the triple X gloves. Sorry, I got to use my bare hands, but I washed them. Don't worry. Yeah. Anyway, Bertha comes in. Yikes. Probiotics now uh, have been long known to be beneficial for health. They help with digestion, inflammation, skin health, and much more. There's a company out there called Seed. They're the world's leader in the technology around probiotics. They're the world's best probiotic, hands down. If you want to use a probiotic and you want to get all the amazing benefits that you see in the studies, go with Seed. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump. Get 30% off your first month's order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Carrie from Canada. Hey, Carrie, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, first, I want to do the obligatory thank you. Um, well, first of all, I'm super nervous. I'm just going to read what I wrote. Um, I've been listening to Mind Pump for over four years, and I always learn something and laugh at something uh, in every episode. So even though you've ruined every other podcast for me, uh, you brought me a lot of joy and a lot of value, so it's worth it. So thank you, guys. Oh, awesome. thank you. All right. Um, 
So I have a question about getting the most out of a long-term, low-volume daily lifting routine. I'll tell you a bit about my background and my current situation, and then I'll go into my question. Uh, so my background, I started lifting 12 years ago when I was 25 uh, to counteract the catabolic effects of my daily one-and-a-half-hour bike commute. Uh, as soon as I started lifting, I knew I'd never stop, and I've been a lifestyle lifter ever since, working out to support my physical and mental health. I don't pursue aggressive aesthetic or athletic goals, but I like to feel strong and I try to push myself when I can, always aiming for progressive overload in some form. Uh, my current situation is uh, for the past few years, life's been more stressful and pushing myself has gotten harder. I'm also not 25 anymore, so committing to 20, to committing to uh, hour-long workouts that I might not be able to properly recover from and need to plan my day and my week around has gotten less and less feasible for me. Um, I've purchased 10 MAPS programs, and I really want to do them all. Um, I've finished Anabolic and Performance, and I really like them. Um, but right now, the only program I seem to be able to follow consistently is MAPS 15. Um, my work is demanding and the only way I can guarantee I won't miss a workout is by doing it first thing in the morning before I can get sidetracked by deadlines. My daily workout is essential for my sanity, but I need to keep workouts short and low volume or I start my day physically taxed and stressed about time. I've done MAPS 15 and MAPS 15 Advanced twice each in the past year and I love how they make me feel. After a summer of travel and inconsistent workouts, I've just started MAPS 15 Advanced again. Um, and my question is, I know the golden rule of strength and hypertrophy training is that everything works, but nothing works forever. So I'm wondering what I should do after finishing this round of MAPS 15, besides just going back and do it again. Um, what can I do to maintain effective and varied programming within my time and energy constraints? Can I modify exercises in MAPS 15 to train other skills and modalities? Uh, is it possible to make effective low volume daily versions of other MAPS programs I've been wanting to do like MAPS Old Time uh, or MAPS Strength? I'd love to have some programming suggestions so I can keep this workout schedule working for me and avoid hitting a plateau or falling into a rut. What great. a great question. Yeah, yeah. Great, yeah. great, great you're question. Wrong. And thanks for the context because that made a big difference. And you, you're, you're so spot on you already. Great ideas. You've already you. figured yeah. out your body and what's working for you. And the fact that you own 10 programs already, you have this, this perfect amount of types of exercises that we have, specific adaptations that we're trying to, to, uh, to accomplish that you can pull from. And, and you can literally build it as if it was like a MAPS 1520 style. So, you know, um, <clears throat> for example, like you brought up like strong, like like there's windmills in there, right? It's a very unique exercise. Nothing stops you from pulling something out of MAPS 15 that you've already done, uh, you know, for the last year to two years consistently and say, you know what, I'm going to put MAPS, I'm going to put win windmills in now because I, I want to have some better rotational strength there. Or let's say you take something from MAPS performance. You're like, you know, that matrix lunge, I don't really do anything, you know, laterally. I, I focus everything in the sagittal plane. So I want to do something that, so I have some lateral stability and strength. So I'm going to put the matrix lunge in, in there. I'm going to pull out the traditional squats. Like, I think you have figured out what works really well for your body as far as the amount of volume to support your overall health. And you absolutely can continue to no. see... <clears throat> Uh, gains and in, in, in strength by by doing exactly what you're kind of thinking about already. Now, Kerry, um, the context helped a lot. So workout programming can seem simple, uh, but there's a lot of variables to consider. So one question you had was, can I just take other programs and break them up into small chunks? You know, but when you do them one day after another, it does change the, the programming uh, to the point where it might actually make the workout need to change or it doesn't work anymore. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, now yeah, MAPS, I'm trying to figure out how to make it effective. Right. So with MAPS 15, the advanced version even, here's an easy way for you to modify it, okay? You could break each movement down into a squat type movement. Now, this is all types of squats, back squats, front mm -hmm. squats, split stance squats, yeah, which are all lunges, sure. lateral type squat. Those are all squatting movements. There's hip hinging movements, all kinds of deadlifts, single leg toe touches, stiff legged yeah. deadlifts, good mornings, like they all Maybe. qualify in that category. You have overhead pressing type movements, all the exercises under that, horizontal pressing movements, all the movements that are under that, rowing movements, all the you know the exercises under that. And then what you could do is you could swap out an exercise. So 
if maps 15 calls for a barbell squat and you're, this is your fourth time through, you could switch it out for another squat type movement. It could be a lunge. Yeah. It could be a front squat. Yeah. It could be a Bulgarian split stance squat. For example, you could do the same thing with the hip hinge, the overhead presses, the rows, the horizontal presses, the rotation and so on. Very, so that's a very easy way to change the workout as you continue to cycle through this style of programming, which seems to be perfectly appropriate for you. I, I think you need to stay this way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, cool. So how about, um, like I got old time, like when the day you launched it, I got super excited and uh, bought it immediately and I'm not quite sure what to do with it now. Um, mm -hmm. Do you guys have any recommendations for turning that into like a daily program, like a 20, 30 minutes a day kind of program? Yeah, we'd have how to, to break it up. I'd have to really look at it and it would take some, some thought yeah. into but you what would, that would look like. But you would still apply kind of what Sal is saying right. is that you would take one of those and because Map Strong does have, I mean, excuse me, Maps Old Time has some unique movements. For example, like the windmill, um, I would probably categorize the the windmill into like a hip hinge movement. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so it would replace like a, a like a, a deadlift, a deadlift, or a single leg toe touch, or a movement like that. So all, you still would you still would follow like the way instead of looking at old timey and oh, I want my program to be like that. How do I make it into a Maps Fifteen? Think of Maps Fifteen yeah. is the is the protocol and how you follow, and then look at the exercises that are in yeah. the other programs and how to switch them out for Maps Fifteen. Maps Fifteen is your blueprint. We figured that out. You figured that okay. out. You have figured out that yeah. that 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 amount of volume is now all you need to figure out is oh, if this, some of the movements in old timey interest you. Yeah. Okay, what 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 uh, what where can I replace well, that? Yeah, and it's it's kind of tough. That's a tough program to use as an example because it it really uh, is about the skill of these like unique yes. movements. And so like we actually had to reverse engineer a lot of those skills and bring it all the way to like the very first components to learn. And then, you know, uh, pragmatically take you like one step at a time to progress. Uh, so you could take one of those movements is my point to this and like basically put that into your 15 minute protocol uh, mm -hmm. and take it at the very beginning. So just, uh, and you'll see how it all kind of lines up throughout the program of like leading you up to like a two hand anyhow or whatever. And so you're going to start, you know, from, from basically from, uh, you know, the, the basis of like doing a windmill and, and, and like how to kind of, um, you know, get, get like, a, acquire that skill. Uh, so you would start with that and then progress it as, as the program kind of lays out. Um, but in, you know, in, in comp, in, um, at the same time, you want to also like structure the rest of your workout, just like Maps 15 already has laid out. Yeah, so that it, would just it, be like it, one it, portion of that that you would alter. An easy way to for us to, to solve this, to help you, is actually to put you in the private forum. You already have 10 programs, so you have plenty to pull from. And the best thing to do is like, hey, you guys, I'm thinking about pulling this exercise out of 15 and replacing it with this from old time. If you're not sure, and we'll and you can we'll, tag us and you can tag us and we'll answer. Oh because, wow, that'd be awesome! Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. We'll just that'll just make it easy. I mean, we're gonna put you in there. I'll have Doug put you in the forum for free, and then you, when you are building your routine, like literally, just hey, if, if if you don't know, right? There might be some that are obvious, right? You might go, oh, obviously, I could take this overhead press out, and I could put a Z press in because it's so similar enough that I get it. But I, you, you are gonna have some movements to Justin's point in old timey where you're like, well, what should I replace? I, I think there's very few, actually. I think most of the movements in there will make sense to you. Yeah, like there's a, a one-handed deadlift mm -hmm. is a hip hinge. Um, yeah. You know, um, a bent press, you could probably put in either, either as a hip hinge or as an overhead press, mm -hmm. depending on what the programming looks like for MAPS 15. That would, would be a challenging one. Um, seesaw, I mean, that's an overhead press yeah. or, or a pressing, you know, mm -hmm. kind of vertical pressing movement. You just need to do phase one. Like there's like, uh, what, six phases or so. Like it's, so you just start like the, the version of it in phase one and then kind of work your way through. Yeah. But, 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 okay. but in the forum, if you're in the forum and you're communicating with us, we'll yeah. build it together with you because we haven't, we're not looking at it right now. It's a little bit difficult yeah. for us to be, Oh, put this here, do that there. But if you, yeah, if yeah. you go through it and you're like, Hey, like, okay, I get what you guys are saying. I'm going to follow the maps 15 basically protocol. And I just want to start to integrate some of these movements for old timey, literally just run it by us. And we'll tell you if that's a good idea or not. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Cause when I've, cause I've been working out for so long and I've tried so many different moves and sometimes I just, I just don't know if something is, if I'm progressing or not, like, cause I've done, I've done a lot of things before. I think uh, this was the reason why I was so interested in doing the, the old time one. Like I, yeah. you know, switch the, the, the overhead press for Z press or mm -hmm. switch a uh, squat for uh, uh, Bulgarian split squat, things like that. Like I, I do that all the time. 
And sometimes I just don't know if it's working or not. So yeah, that's what I was, that's why I was looking for some feedback. Um, because yeah, I just, um, depending on the situation, like sometimes I'm traveling, uh, I have to modify the, the way that I do my workout. I have to modify the equipment that I'm using. Um, and, uh, and I keep doing the kind of the same program, plugging in different movements and I'm just trying to figure out how to optimize the effectiveness. So yeah, well, just make um, sure you do that and you string out like three to four weeks. So if you do those swap outs, so you give yourself a chance to kind of get good at those movements. That's a great point. And Carrie, I, I want you to trust your, your intuition a little yeah, more I think based got, off of what yeah, you're saying. I know you, yeah, you're, you, on, you're on track. Yeah. I mean, based off this conversation, I think you, I think you're, you've got a pretty good grip on what's working for you. I mean, you've, you said a few things. I've noticed that, uh, uh, I, that working out a little every day is good for my mental health, for my stress. It's not too much volume. It gives me the energy that I need. Like those, that's, that's your body telling you like, this is what you need to do. So I think that's the protocol for you until your lifestyle changes and the context changes. I think continue on that, you know, two or three exercises a day type of protocol until things radically change and then you need to change the workout. But for now, that's it. Okay. Okay, great. So just keep on swapping in similar Correct. things from the different programs. 100%. Okay, great. Thank you guys so much. We'll you got it. We'll see you in the forum, Carrie. Thanks, Carrie. Yeah. Look forward to seeing you guys in the forum. Bye. <clears throat> Bye-bye. I, I, I tell you that uh, that MAPS 15 format, I, I think, is probably the- I fell in love it's, with it. It's going to be the best, most yeah. appropriate mainstream format for people. It's game changer. And it's yeah. like, people are just now kind of like figuring you, that out. You know what I think I'm, we're finding, which is really interesting, which uh, I think this was by accident. I don't think when we were, we thought of a lot of things when we were building it, right? But one of the things that I think we underestimated is the amount of- stress outside of exercise that people have in their lives yeah, yeah. today versus say 20 years ago. It's more than we thought. It is. Yeah. I think it, I think it's, and I think that's why we're seeing such huge responses from people going, mm -hmm. Oh my God, this program's amazing. Yeah. And so many people who thought it wasn't enough volume that are seeing huge gains from it is just because but, okay. I don't think people are factoring in all the other stress they got going in their life as, as something that could be hindering their progress. hundred yeah. percent. And, and the, the data on strength training is clear. It's like fatigue reduces the effectiveness of strength training's primary goal, which is to build strength. Unless you're looking to build endurance, uh, fatigue is the enemy. And I think the average, most people, I, I'm going to make the argument now that most people are going to be better off doing a little every day than a lot some days. Yeah. So, and, and it also simultaneously fits people's <coughs> schedules better. Anyway, so this format, this MAPS 15 format, which you can interchange exercises and intensity and all that stuff, I think that's the the format of the future for the average, for most people. She's on to gold training. with yeah. the way that she's approaching it. Yeah, for sure. Our next caller is Crystal from Arkansas. Hey, Crystal. How can we help you? Hey, guys. Hey, good morning. <laughs> Y'all hit your protein goal this morning because I'm coming for you with a lot of questions. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I'm good. Right, Caffeine let's, let's and everything. Brain pills. I think. Got everything. Make them good. Let's hear them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm a personal trainer. Um, I have a garage gym. This is where I train all my clients. I run about 22 clients in here. Um, my big question right now is last year I jumped into powerlifting just because I really think as a trainer, you just grow a ton more when you throw yourself in the situation. So jumped in it, set a few state records, got hooked, wow. of course, couldn't walk away. Yeah. <laughs> That's so, awesome. um, I just set two bench press records in two different federations and I feel like I want to take a little bit of a break from powerlifting and I might want to jump into bodybuilding next year just to grow more, you know, just not so much as that's where my interest is, just so much as I can grow more as a trainer, um, jumping into something like that. I haven't fully pulled the trigger because my last powerlifting meet was a lot harder than I wanted it to be. And uh, mentally, it was it was more than I uh, signed up for. So <laughs> I had to drop weight classes last second. So I haven't fully committed to the bodybuilding trigger yet. But what I wanted, my question here is, where do you guys, what program do you feel like I should be running while I'm making that choice? Like, I'm just struggling right now where I should be and what I should be doing because I haven't pulled the trigger in either way. And uh, so my workouts are just kind of mainly powerlifting based because that's where I've been sitting for the last, you know, six months. But 
I bought the RGB bundle for the Black Friday program. So um, I've just been kind of playing around with some of those, but I haven't committed to any of those either. I just wanted to talk to y'all and see what y'all think I should be running for now till I kind of pull the trigger on bodybuilding. Yeah, I think the RGB bundle is perfect. I think that's exactly, I mean, I don't think that's exactly what I did mm -hmm. to get ready for a show. And the way I treated it was anabolic and performance was off season. So while I'm trying to build, build the metabolism, build as much muscle, and then aesthetic was getting ready for prep. So that's kind of how I, I, I think, I, I think, uh, you might really benefit from map symmetry. If you've been doing powerlifting for so long, the, um, because it's so bilateral, I think a unilateral based program might give you the, the balance that'll really help a lot with your stage presentation with, you know, balance in the body. The, symmetry would be another option. The most important thing, especially considering you're a trainer, uh, heading into the the idea of potentially competing is going to be all diet. Like you're like, as far as programs, like th that's a great suggestion that Sal said, you, there's a lot of different combos that you can do. Uh, Maps aesthetic is designed to, to sculpt the physique, but bodybuilding shows are one in the off season. How well of a job that you do of addressing any of your weak points, right? So any imbalances, if you have overly developed shoulders compared to your hamstrings or whatever. So looking at your body, trying to be as symmetrical as possible and building muscle in those areas to balance it out. But most importantly, it's going to be understanding how to diet for a show. That's the hardest part. And that's the part and where most people make a mistake, clients and trainers and competitors is heading into a prep in a in a non-advantageous metabolic position meaning you only eat 1900 to 2000 calories and you're at the you know 20 percent body fat range and you want to get ready for a show like that's just not a good position for a female to be at in the low you know under 2000 calories and over 20 percent body fat and getting ready to get on stage and then they're going right into a prep you're just going to hit a wall you're just not you're not going to be able to lean out as much as you need to, to be ready so getting yourself in a, in a metabolic position where you're consuming 26 to 2,900, sometimes 3,000 calories. I have some of my females eating in the off season so that when we get ready for a show, I've got plenty of room to work with to keep you healthy and still cut calories. If you And I, I get so many people that would want to hire me. And I the first question I always ask them is, where's your calories at right now? And if they tell me things like, oh, I'm at 1,900 calories, and you're and you're at a you know twenty percent body fat range, which is not a bad place, but it's still a long ways from where we need to be for a stage. The, it's just too much. Do you know where you're at with that? As far as like my calories, yeah. Um, I really, to be honest, I don't pay attention to my calories. I'm really just protein goal focused, but I'm well over two thousand. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm hitting my protein every day, so I'm well over. I'm probably. 2,500 a day. Yeah. I mean, to, be, a bit more. to be strong like you are, by the way, what was your, what was your record at 132 pounds? What you, you said you hit you know, some bench press records. <laughs> um, so I did two in two weeks. I did the 142 pound class and I benched 137 pounds. Nice. And then I did, I dropped weight and did the 132 pound class and I benched, I think it was 126 pounds nice. that nice. day. Nice. Nice. I failed on that. 32. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know what? The the two things, because I've, I've, I obviously I've ran our power lift program. My favorite things about running like a power lifting routine and my favorite things about running bodybuilding is the, the different things that I got as a coach and trainer from power lifting uh, that sharpened my sword as for pro from a programming perspective like that. When you, the, the type of programming that you get from, from power lifters and, and like ours that we have and what you learn from going through that, that you, you have experienced yourself is like really understanding good detail programming for bodybuilding. It's all diet. What I learned it, right. like that, that's right. Every, like right, right now you actually have a winning physique on stage. You already have it. It's literally just carving it down to reveal all that hard work you've already put in. So that, right, so right, right, what, right. what you're going to learn on the nutritional side, uh, going ha hands on, like even all the knowledge I had from books, it doesn't compare to what I learned like going through it. So that's, and from a diet perspective, I think that's the most, the, the thing that you should focus on the most and you're going to get the most value from, from like, as far as a coach yeah, and a trainer cool. is the, is nutrition manipulation. Like that's what I got from bodybuilding for sure. 100%. Yeah. yeah that's, that's totally my point of view as, as looking into it too. And I mean, I just learned, I mean, I just, I feel like I grew so much as a trainer doing powerlifting that I'm just like, 
I'm eager to get more. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. okay, what else can I love jump that. into? I love, I love that. Let's go down that route. I so, love that. And I think that's a very healthy approach to going into something like a mm-hmm. sport like that, because that sport can be very unhealthy, but going into it as the mindset of I'm going in to, to educate myself. Yeah, it'll be great. That's a good, that's a very good mindset to go into something like uh, bodybuilding for sure. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you guys. So you feel like I should be running anabolic and performance until I pull the trigger and then jump into athletic when I'm ready to prep. You yeah, I, I like that. I'm going to have, mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to have this. Did you have, I think programs that are fine. Oh, you know, Sal did suggest yeah, symmetry. symmetry would be a good I'll have addition. Doug send you over symmetry. So you have access to I that. I think symmetry is just a good idea oh, to perfect. follow yeah. uh, any after powerlifting. Anyway, it's also a great, you, you, you're a trainer. It's a great program. To, to have because it's all it's it's very very good for your clients to help them out totally. with them imbalances so you, you'll learn a lot from having symmetry so i think that's a good value add and then i want to put you in our, our forum too and then are you uh chris are you already signed up for the free three-day course that we're doing for trainers bet your ass i am all right good, <laughs> all, right, all, right, girl. all right good girl all Thank right you. We'll, we'll see you there perfect all right thanks guys thank right, you bye that's awesome yeah. Good. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, uh, if she's already been competing in powerlifting, training that long, she's strong. The muscle. She's, she's got the muscle. Yeah. yeah I mean, you can see it on her build already. Like yeah. that's. I mean, you know, it's funny because I know that's a, an, an area that I think uh, like the bodybuilders that are out there. I mean, that's how they market and sell themselves is that they have like this magical workout routine or like no. you know this hack. It's like it's it's diet in that it's world. It's diet yeah. in, in powerlifting. It is programming, programming. Yep. Yeah. very much so programming. Like you can easily fuck up a powerlifting meet because you don't know how to program yeah. correctly mm-hmm. you and you can easily have a shitty workout program and actually put together a pretty badass physique for stage if you have diet you could down. also mess it up with a bad diet and have the best workout that's the world. right you totally. could have the you could have the most perfect progressively overloaded program and everything like that but you don't have a dialed in diet or you don't have a healthy metabolism going into it and you terrible our next caller is zach from ohio what's up zach what up help you Hey, yeah. Thank you guys uh, for taking my call. This is awesome to be with you and I'll, I'll get right in. Thank you. Sweet. Um, so my brother, he's been preaching to me about you guys for years. Uh, and finally this summer, uh, I got uh, hooked uh, hooked, and uh, love, love doing your stuff. So, so far I've run through anabolic. I'm in the middle of performance right now. Um, most consistent I've ever exercised. Uh, I'm loving everything right now, especially just the I love just lifting, lifting weights, seeing how heavy I could get. Um, but I'd also be lying if, you know, I wasn't hoping a few pounds would come off in the process so far. And um, so far it's been, uh, I fluctuated consistently in about a five pound range. Um, would love to, I'm about 230 right now, five, nine, would love to lose about 30 pounds. Um, and I hear you guys talking a lot about reverse dieting, uh, but usually I hear it in the context of, I don't know, someone who wants to go from like 15% down to 10% or something like that. Uh, so first off, someone who is in more of my situation where it's like, I think the scale I have says about 30%, um, is reverse dieting still something that you do with that? Or do you just, you know, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and kind of on top of that, my situation is a little unique because I go to a school where all our meals are given to us. So I don't really have dietary control. Uh, I don't really have a way to count calories or anything like that. I just, I try to aim for about 200 grams of protein a day. Um, and that's about the the best I can kind of, uh, gauge right now. But even that sometimes is hard to do just based on what's being served that day. So, um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to get your y'all's thoughts on those kinds of things. Zach, how, how are you hitting the 200 grams of protein? If your meals are already prepared, like what kind of control, I guess, do you have, what are we working with? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, so we get three meals a day. Um, some days, you know, we'll start with like eggs, eggs and sausage, you know, lunch will be something like chicken. Um, dinner will be something meatloaf ribs, maybe more chicken. Um, other days though, it's like, you're hoping it's like oatmeal, uh, deli wraps for lunch and then, uh, dinners like lasagna. Um, so it's just, every day is a little bit unique and I'm just kind of hoping. So I have some protein powder. Okay. Um, yeah. So protein you know powder is how you hit. Yeah. You're, you're an example of someone who I would definitely utilize that as a, as a yeah. tool. So here, the, here's the deal with reverse dieting. The idea is with reverse dieting is to give yourself a calorie surplus, an appropriate one 
to fuel a metabolism boost through muscle building. And then from there, get your metabolism or your calories to a point where you can safely cut from and end up in a, in a, in a sustainable place. Okay. I don't know how many calories you're eating now or where, where, where that looks for you. And if you're comfortable cutting from there, like if you feel like you could eat less than you are now and it's sustainable for you, um, you could go on a cut and just see how you feel, um, and take it from there because of the lack of control over your diet, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging. So, you know, if I was in your situation, I'm trying to think, what would I do if I was in your situation? Well, I, okay. I feel like too, we might be missing something here too. Like you're in, you're in college, you say, right? You're in college. So I'm school. Yeah. So, okay. Candy, ice cream, or beer. What is it? Like, what is it? What, where? Well, hold on. Not, he says he's in wait. a Catholic seminary. I don't think either any of those. Well, definitely not the beer. <laughs> hey, we have a bar. Is, okay. um, bro, well, don't, I, yeah, hey, don't be full, bro. Don't be full. That's right. Don't, Catholic don't, drink. Yeah, I, I drink with the so Catholic what, priest. Which one of the three, or is it all three? Uh, usually not ice cream, but um, I, I pretty much cut beer out as well. Um, candy, though, definitely, you know, that'll come up sometimes, but. Um, in general, I've done a decent job at cutting back on a lot of that stuff. So uh, tip, and this is including myself in this category. I, when I, what I, what I tend to do is, it is like the worst situation. And, and it's, and a lot of times it has to do because I, I just, the satiety signal that you get from protein, the days that I overconsume calories are also the days that I miss my protein intake. So like you listed a day that would be challenging, right? Oatmeal lasagna and and like a wrap like that's low protein and a lot of carbohydrates right in that day and then that's the day also i, I eat the whole box of mike and ike's that night you know what i'm saying like that's so it's like a double whammy i over consume calories and i miss my protein take a lot of times when someone is in a situation where they have they're limited to what they have access to food wise they're in college um this is where the challenge becomes uh is one it's already you're already limited and then the day that you don't do a good job, maybe hitting your protein take is also the day that you overconsume on the sugars or alcohol or whatever it is, right? So I think really starting to peer into that, I think something that will be super beneficial to you to ride out the gates if you've never done it is to download an app like Fat Secret and just start inputting. And you and just because you don't have uh, a scale or maybe you don't have access to it, you could still get a good guesstimation of like what what you are consuming and many times just that awareness is is enough to get you to kind of shift some of the habits and behaviors like you start to realize like oh wow it's like adam was right like i it's you know it's not that candy is making me fat or candy's not letting me get to my it's like literally i do it on the worst times mm. and if i could just discipline myself to not allow myself to have the candy on the days i also miss my protein intake i think i'd be in a better place and so that i think that's a good place yeah, to start and the, now the key with what adam's saying is if you make some changes if you cut a few things out that you think you can cut out like candy for example or whatever is to do it consistently long enough so that you can start to see an effect because what tends what people will do is they'll cut something out for a couple weeks not see much movement and throw it back in but it takes a lot longer than that so i mean you could do a very easy cut uh and what i mean by easy is a gradual one by simply removing you know the the, the big offenders you know if you're looking at the diet and you're saying well today's a lasagna day instead of having yeah. two pieces i'll have one piece um, you know, and right. candy was the other example or whatever, or just cutting the portions sizes down by maybe cutting out the non-essentials like carbohydrates and just doing it consistently and then see what happens, see how your body responds. But if you did it like that, I think you would see a nice gradual loss in body fat and probably not much of a negative impact on your strength. That's, I mean, that's <laughs> exactly how I would see it is like, you know, when the options are not so ideal, like that's kind of just a natural signal for you to kind of lessen the portion or, you know, maybe not eat, consume quite as much for that day. Um, but yeah, to load up on your, your protein days as much as you can and just kind of like undulate it like that as, as it presents itself. Are you, are, now are you studying to be a priest? Is that what you're going to school for? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Do you know Father Steve who works at uh, uh, Word on Fire, who produces the Word on Fire podcast? I know of him. Uh, uh, I've never met him or anything, but yeah, yeah. he's the buff, he's the buffest priest I've ever known. Yeah, I know. I've <laughs> I've, uh, I've listened to y'all's episodes with like Bishop Barron and stuff, and so those yeah. are great episodes. Yeah, very cool. So, uh, you have you have access to a gym too and everything, huh? Yeah, we have a gym. We have a 
we have a decent gym at the seminary and then also we have access to the local hospital gym. They give us that for free. So good for you. I, I would like to put you in our private forum because we're, we're like throwing a bunch of ideas and yeah. things like that. And the truth is we just need to know more, Maybe a little bit more. Coaching. Yeah. We need to know more for sure of what's going on. Like, cause I mean, and not that this is you, but you, you could show us your diet and it's like, you're only eating 1500 calories and we're telling you to cut something out. Like, and that would totally change our advice. Or maybe we look at it and we assess it and you're like, you're actually missing your protein intake massively, yeah. or you're over consuming like, like, so, or you have a tremendous amount of stress right now because it's finals and you got something going on. Like, so there's a lot of other moving factors here. And I think just having you having access to us to kind of keep us up to date. I think the first step is to use the fat secret app and let's just start kind of getting an idea, a better idea, like than just like guesstimating or guessing what you're doing. Like let's get some tracking done in, in the uh, <coughs> fat secret app. And that will give us a better insight on what's going on nutritionally to, to know like where to, what direction to push yeah. you in, whether I would say, Hey, let's just cut some calories or Hey, let's add some food into your diet and do more of a reverse because I think your, your metabolism needs yeah. it. Zach, are you following, you're following some of our programs. I see you wrote in your mm -hmm. anabolic. Do you, do you have any other programs that you're following? Yeah. So I'm, I'm doing performance right now. Uh, but the, yeah, no, I'm not doing any, anything outside of, out of y'all stuff. Okay. I saw you, you comment on wanting to power lift or maybe follow. Do you have that program? I do not know. All right. I'll send that to you, Zach. So great. Awesome. Yeah. Thank so you'll have access to that. Just pray for us, huh? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we need in return. Yeah. I appreciate that. We need, especially Adam, needs a lot of help. Yeah. No, no, we all, we all need a lot of help. So I appreciate that. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, get in the, get in the forum and keep us posted. I'd, I'd love to hear uh, what's going on. Start tracking for me. Give me a little more insight. And then I think we can give a little better direction than what we already did. Awesome. Appreciate it, guys. You got it, man. All right, Thank Zach. You. When we, when we, this just reminds me, when we went down to meet Bishop Barron, I was so caught off guard by a jack, like jacked bodybuilder <laughs> jack looking priest. priest. Yeah. You know what I mean? But of course, like what, why would, why I would mean, that I, be a thing? I, what was wild to me was actually that there was multiple. I yeah, mean, they were what, all. <laughs> what was the other guy that was super strong? Oh, that, I uh, forgot. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Real good yeah. dude too. But they have a gym at this college. That's yeah. so phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. No, that's. Great. I didn't even. I didn't see. I didn't look further down. I wish it was too. more like that. The evangelical world. I don't see that a lot. A lot of uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, snacks. Yeah, you know, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of potlucks. Yeah. 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 You know, I I actually really struggled with that. Uh, not to go off on a tangent with like my 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 you know religion journey or whatever, but that you know, you had these people that were professing all these things that they were doing in their life, mm -hmm. but yet really over consuming on the food. And it's just like, dude, your body's your temple. Like if yeah. that's, and it, and there's an addiction, there's a weird disconnect there, there. there's a, an addiction there. Also, if you're carrying yourself a 50, a hundred pounds overweight, like, okay, so you're pretty good. You don't, you, you know, you're faithful to your wife. You don't, you're good to your kids and you pray every day, but then you go and yeah. you, you binge, you know what I'm saying? Like there's, there's a disconnect there for sure. I really had a hard time reconciling that as a kid like growing up yeah our next caller is kayla from georgia kayla how's it going hey how are you guys doing good, good. How are you? This how are you doing? Crazy. i'm like i'm shaking this is so awesome <laughs> um i just want you guys to know that i'm so grateful to be here today um i rehearsed this in my head so many times today <laughs> but you guys have changed my life i before i found y'all i was like literally i had the worst eating disorder um I was running miles and miles a day. I was teaching workout classes and strength training, and I was living on about 900 calories, wow. and I was also chain smoking. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, man. I just want you guys to know that today I um, I actually quit smoking a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, uh, today I'm at uh, 4,000 calories maintenance. Whoa. Um, wow. I've gained, Amazing. like, a ton of strength. Like, I've uh, – Actually, been able to do pull ups, and uh, right now I'm at 20. <laughs> wow, 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 wait, wait, wow, you, wow. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, you can do 20 pull ups. Anabolic. Yeah, you can Matt's do 20. Anabolic. It's changed my life. Oh, oh, this is <laughs> incredible. Oh, yeah, wow, so, that's killer. Uh, I don't run anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Good, good to hear. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm trying not to cry because you guys, you, you guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And how can we help you, Kayla? <laughs> Well, um, I live a very active lifestyle. Um, I'm always on the trail. I do a lot of trail guiding, um, especially like in the, on the AT. Uh, so the, the trail's really thick and rough and it's a lot of cardio. And honestly, it's just really hard for me to keep up with, um, not losing weight. <laughs> 
Um, I love hiking and I'm, I usually take a break in the winter, but when I, um, start back up in the summer, like with trail clearing and stuff like that, uh, I just need some way to be able to not kill myself, but also continue strength training and hiking at the same time. Um, and just how can I take care of my body for longevity? <laughs> Great you question. Know, you know, it's funny. You're asking this question right now, and I'm actually looking over at this package. Uh, it's a friend of Sal's that we were considering investing in the company. And there's only some scenario. There's a handful of scenarios that I could see it having tremendous value for somebody. You're an example of that. Like, is that for sale? Do you know if that's for sale? I don't know if it is yet for sale, but it, it essentially. Oh, that's so exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so it's essentially, you know, uh, it would be like something that you could take with you on these hikes that would be in a package, easy to, to easy to take, and you can consume and eat while you train, uh, sorry, while you hike and move. Do you, I'm, I'm sure you probably already have stuff like that that you bring. Um, I do. I um, actually protein bars, but I honestly, I, I really prefer not to. Creatures of Habit has been a lifesaver for mm -hmm. me because I can keep it fresh on the trail. And um, that's been awesome. Jerky. Um, but yeah. Okay. I tried to stay away from processed stuff. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, how, so how much activity are you actually doing? So, um, you're um, high, like, how many see. miles or uh, what's the distance look like? And, um, right now it's, it's close to about, um, 10 a day or 10 every time I do my trail guiding trips. Sometimes it'll be five, but it's the terrain that is so intense. Okay. Like, climbing basically like some areas you've got to have like a rope and stuff to get through how thick it is so it may be 10 wow. miles but it's like 10 miles of that there's wow. hardly anything that's good. Wow. now now it makes sense how you're eating 4,000 calories i was going to be like yeah. that's crazy uh, yeah. there's yeah. no yeah. way you're eating that yeah. much but that's... now it makes a lot of sense yeah and, you're, you're yeah. Just and, and your strength is phenomenal i mean 20 pull-ups is an incredible feat for anybody because yeah. It is insane, guys. I didn't think I could ever get there in my life. I was used to be so weak, but <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, so, that's, that's so huge. I would say this: um, while you're in season like this, right? While you're doing so much of this hiking, um, I would do a basic, traditional strength training workout, maybe once a week at most, or like a Maps fifteen. Yeah, Maps fifteen would be good too, where you're doing a few exercises, a couple exercises a day, but even just once, once a week on your day off, if you have a day off. I would go to the gym and I would do like four compound lifts. And the goal is really to try to maintain the strength that you have. Then when you go off season, that's when you really try to build and try to gain. If you try to gain while doing that much hiking, you're going to bump into just, just too much stress on the body. You're going to yeah. bump into... Uh, it just it's going to overwhelm your body's ability to recover and, and even if she could physically if she could physically handle all that she'd always probably she'd probably run into a digestive issue just trying to eat five thousand yeah, calories yeah. in order to sustain <laughs> yeah. that's probably where you're you're probably at a place right now eating that much where it's just just tough to get any more which is why i brought up that company i know it's we we haven't invested in them yet but it's a really interesting product because of how small these little it's little cubes and it's they're extremely they're like gummies. Yeah, they're little gummies. It's really and they're dense. Very, very dense. Yeah. High protein, it's high calorie. Amazing. Doug says it is for sale. It's called getmeepo.com. Uh, okay. So we, no okay. affiliation. Yeah. No affiliation yeah. affiliation whatsoever. Um, yeah, I think one day a week of strength training would be perfect. Mm -hmm. Like literally four compound lifts. That's it. Yeah. Once a week. Awesome. That is sets. so exciting. I'm actually gonna be able to survive the the next tough season that it's that's incredible guys yeah. now okay, and then when you go so off one, then when you go off season kayla that's when you can follow one of our programs and that's <clears> you oh, can yes. really yeah and, and really focus on building uh and you know muscle and strength to carry you through the next season but once a week will be plenty uh in the context of what you painted thank you so much that's such a relief <laughs> yeah <laughs> you got it you got it also do it now what programs of yeah, ours what do you programs have programs are you because you said you mentioned Anabolic. Anabolic, right yeah and performance. Anabolic okay. has been um, incredible for me, though. It's been the best. Performance was a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, MAPS 15 is going to be great because MAPS 15 is just a shortened version yeah. of MAPS Anabolic. You know what I like for you, too, Kayla, is MAPS powerlift in your off season. Right. Would you be interested in doing like a powerlifting workout in the yeah. off season? Yeah, you get so much strength potential. I think that's a great goal. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> All right, we'll send that to you. No, you guys don't have to do that. I'd rather support you guys and, and pay for it myself. You just did with everything you said. Yeah, yeah we're gonna no, air this. You're, by you're our walking yeah. billboard, so yeah. that's what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, no, we'll send thank that to you. you so much. We appreciate thank we you. appreciate the support, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, and appreciate your energy. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. <laughs> All right. Great. Oh, that's so cute. She's awesome. super, I mean, the, the, the truth is you, you change somebody that radically. And that's what it's. What, I mean, remember having clients like oh, this, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it, Matt, you running like crazy, You've got you've got a borderline eating disorder. You're eating 900 calories, like weak probably. Your body's barely yes. functioning. Yeah, and then 4,000 calories, 20 pull-ups. 20 pull-ups. What? I'm still, still probably- tripping on that. Like yeah. you know, it's just uh, just for your average client, like average female client. I've had like even just getting like two. Was like, I don't think amazing. I've ever had a female client do 20 pull-ups. No, like, but like she's two. she looks really petite. She's yeah. obviously very strong yeah. for her body yeah, weight, strength to weight ratio. And great. the fact that she's doing this kind of climbing and hiking, she's getting lots of practice in that kind of movement. So, but she's obviously got some gifts, right? Which I hope she listens to this because. Uh, she has some gifts towards strength, especially for her body weight. Yeah. Which is why I wanted her to do powerlifting. That's actually a great I bet point. she'll Perfect follow it. I bet she would crush. I yeah. bet she would crush in her bo- sure. in her weight class, right? Yeah. So. yeah. If you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our free fitness guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump to Stefano and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. <laughs> <laughs> 